What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Bears Profit Plays YouTube channel. If you enjoyed the content in this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel below. Also, be sure to stick around to the end of this video for a quick message from our team. Let's get into the video. All right, guys, let's look at some college basketball picks for Thursday, March 9th slate. Before we get into our picks tonight, right now, all memberships on our website, bearsprofitplays.com, are half off. For as low as 5 bucks a month, you can get our best plays for the month. We are running the discount for championship week in college basketball. And the start of March Madness, you only have one week to take advantage of this deal. So go get yourself a membership and let's keep winning. All right, Trey, let's break down our games. Yes, I had the Wisconsin game against Ohio State, and it was an emotional roller coaster. There was multiple times where Wisconsin was down by double digits that I basically just gave up watching and basically just gave up caring. And then I would get a text from Bear saying oh my god oh my god and i'd be like what the freak did i just miss like they were just down well, why is it a four point game whenever they're down by 12 points literally 45 seconds ago but regardless they broke my heart in the end and did not cover and i ate all my words saying that wisconsin's defense was so good because at the end of the day their offense was garbaggio they did not score for a total of six minutes in one period and then a total of four minutes in the next so a total of one-fourth of the game was just them clanking shots off the back of the rim. But regardless, I'm going to be better today. You guys know, all know who I'm picking, so just sit back and relax. Yeah, I had a Colorado State money line against Fresno State. When I talked about it, they were minus one and a half. They closed that minus two and a half. They won the game by two. So glad that we got the money line in that game. Didn't want to mess with the spread, just like we didn't want to mess with the Georgia Tech game spread. So we cash again with Colorado State winning the game by two points against Fresno State. Teets? I had the dogs of Iona versus Mount St. Mary's, um, and I gave it at I, – I personally was calling it at about minus 11.5. I think it was at minus 13.5. I said you could play it up to 16 or 17.5, and, and if you would have taken it at any given time in that stretch, you still would have won because they won by 20. It was 74 to 54. Uh, shout out to Jalen Benjamin for Mount St. Mary's, though. He went for 27 points. Scored literally half of their team's points. Uh, other than him, the Lafieu fella scored eight, and everyone else scored five or less. Um, whereas Iona, Walter Clayton Jr., 21 and 11. Dennis Jenkins, 15.7 assists. And Nelly Jr. Joseph, 10 and 11. These boys are making a deep run for the conference, and they will probably make a uh, hopefully more than just a one-game run for March Madness. I'd love to watch it. Yeah, Iona looked really good today, so good pick there, Teets. All right, guys, let's move on to our picks tonight. Trey starts off. Yes, I'm going to be attacking the Maris versus Quinnipiac game. I'm very proud of this Maris team. I gave them out as my free play a few days ago and proclaimed that they are going on what will be called the greatest run of March Madness history, and step one was complete. We are moving on to step two. They beat Manhattan by 11 points. Well, I gave them out as one-and-a-half point underdogs, but whenever it tipped off, it was at three-and-a-half. Regardless, they entered it in as underdogs, and I'm picking them again here at plus five-and-a-half. It may go up even higher. It did after I picked them because nobody likes picking Maris, but I do, and, th and there's a reason why. If you bet Maris with me last game and you were watching, you saw the emotion that Patrick Gardner was playing with. And he does average, he's played Quinnipiac twice, he's averaged 22 points per game in his games against Quinnipiac. So he was fist pumping, he was yelling, he's a senior who knows this could be his last game and he is not wanting to walk off as a loser. He does not want to lose these games and he's putting the team on his back. He's already accounted for over 30% of Maris's points and it has even increased since the conference tournament has started and I don't expect that to change against Quinnipiac. But these two teams have played already twice this season, like I said, and Quinnipiac did win both those games. But everything is on the table in the conference tournament. And I think five and a half points is just too generous for this Maris team who does play hard. But Maris is going to be going up against it in this game, though. Quinnipiac is led by a dynamic backcourt duo. Desi Jones is averaging 17 and a half points per game in his two games against Maris. Matt Balak is averaging 19 and a half points per game in his two games against Maris. So definitely going to try to be zoning in on those two guys to shut them down and i think that they do have a good chance because they're going to be playing with a lot of grit and a lot of heart and here are my two favorite trends for this game the underdog in this matchup is four and one ats in the last five games and quinnipiac is also two and six ats over their last eight games i don't want to give out you know money line even though i, I, though I do think that maris is going to win this game i know it deep in my heart but 
I do think this game's going to be close, and I will be betting an irresponsible amount of money on Maris plus five and a half. Might and and I'll be even sprinkling some stuff on the money line because damn it, they deserve it. Yeah, Trey, we're going to get you a Maris T-shirt. You love that team so much. But uh, for my play tonight, I'm going with Illinois versus Penn State game. The Big Ten tournament will be fantastic. This game will be must watch. And I'm going to side with Penn State in this game. I really want to take the money line, but I will take the plus three because this could come down to the last possession. Penn State has finished the regular season winning five of six games. They had a double-digit comeback against Maryland in their last game out winning at the buzzer. Illinois has won three of their last five games, but has failed to cover the spread in four of those five games. In their last game, they got down by 20-plus against Purdue. They rallied back, tied it up with about two minutes left, and then ultimately fell by five points in the game. This game is interesting because Penn State has actually beaten Illinois both times they have met this season. They were plus 10.5 and and plus 3.5 in those games. The saying is it's hard to beat a team three times in one season. We all know that saying, but I think it's going to happen this season for Penn State. Not only did Penn State beat Illinois in both games, they beat Illinois by double digits in both games as dogs. Penn State matches up very well with Illinois because Illinois has plenty of size down low to protect the basket, but the perimeter defense does lack at times. Penn State has a man by the name of Jalen Pickett. I'm sure you're all aware of him. I've been talking about him since the beginning of the season. He is playing like the most complete college basketball player ready for the NBA right now. He can take over any game at any time. He's a great scorer. Not the biggest player on the floor, but he can score from anywhere. The big thing with Pickett is he's a great teammate. He gets his teammates involved in the game. Pickett is averaging seven assists per game, and Penn State has Funk and Lundy, who are two of the best three-point shooters in the Big Ten. Penn State makes 10.8 threes per game. They shoot nearly 40% from deep, and that is how they're going to win this game against Illinois. Illinois on the season has been decent against the three-point shot, only allowing teams to make six threes per game. But Penn State, in their two games played against Illinois, made 12 threes in the second game, shooting 42.9% from deep and made 12 threes in the first game, shooting 50% from deep. Penn State can go on the inside, but they prefer to shoot threes. The way Penn State is playing right now and how they played the first two games against Illinois, I will back Penn State in this game plus the three points. Teets? Penn State with the uh, long-range game instead of penetrating on the inside. I get you. I'm looking at the Iowa State-Baylor Big 12 matchup, uh, and honestly, this is a very interesting game to be covering. Baylor is minus four and a half as the home team even though they are in kansas city for the conference tournament uh and the over under set at 134 and a half uh baylor this year they've honestly been very good 22 and 9 on the season they're averaging 77 points a game giving up 70 whereas iowa state was very hot at the beginning of the season and they have fizzled quite a bit however they're still very strong defensively offense scoring 68 defense only allowing 62 Head-to-head has painted a completely different picture than what I'm going to be talking about. Uh, Iowa State has actually won both games at home and on the road, uh, 77 to 62 and 73 to 58. In both games, Flagler for Baylor has scored exactly 20 points. Uh, Cal Schur in the first matchup scored 23, Caleb Grill 18, and in the second one, Holmes for Iowa State scored 16, while Kyle Schroeder had 12 in a very weird game because those were the two leading scorers for a 73-point team. Um, it Bear just touched on it for Penn State, uh, but I'm kind of bringing it in a different light of it is very difficult to beat a team three times in a season, uh, and even more so, Baylor and Iowa State most recently played their last game against each other. Last game that they were on the court was against each other. So that's going to be two straight games for the two teams. Um, I think this is going to be a big statement win for Baylor. Baylor doesn't need the win to be in the tournament, but I feel like Baylor is hungry to continue to prove themselves as a team that can definitely make a deep run in March uh, for the March Madness tournament. So give me Baylor minus four and a half for a big statement win. All right, guys, that'll do it for our college basketball picks and predictions. If you guys enjoyed the content, please be sure to drop a like on this video and subscribe to the channel below. We see you guys next video, and thanks for watching. Just want to let everyone know that while we do give out free picks, plays, and predictions on our YouTube channel, we also have a website for you to check out. On our website, bearsprofitplays.com, you can subscribe to the website absolutely free with an email and gain access to our written articles about upcoming sporting events. If you're really looking to make some cash, we have an option to become a member of our website. If you become a member, you will gain access to our Locks of the Week, which are written articles that go in-depth as to why we are picking that particular outcome. As of now, our member plays have been red hot, hitting over 60% of our plays. If you don't want to become a member, it's no sweat. We are here to try and make you guys some money. That's our main goal. So come on over to bearsprofitplays.com and subscribe for free. Check us out, follow our free picks, and see for yourself that our member plays are a great investment for you. Thanks for watching.